Helmets are a need to keep you safe on roads with increasing accidents. Even if you are riding slowly, we don't know what the road holds. So helmets are made a necessity by the government and there are heavy fines for those who ride without a helmet. So people get some random helmets without even checking its quality or understanding how it works. We have two helmets here. Let's test its durability. Did you guys see that? The helmet we got from the local store was not able to withstand the force. But the helmet to which we added the special material was able to withstand the force. See, if you take a helmet, it has a hard outer layer and underneath it has extended polystyrene. That's basically thermocol. So most helmets use thermocol for padding. But in the second helmet, we added oxytic foam to make it stronger. So oxytic foam is a game changer when it comes to helmets. Why? It's because oxytic materials are built differently and they absorb impact better than thermocol. It's because of its structure. So helmets protect your head and don't flatten like SpongeBob. That is, if the right helmets are used. It's all thanks to something called the Poisson's Ratio. Let's break it down. Before we look into the Poisson's Ratio, we'll have to know about strain. So when I pulled and compressed the rubber, it experienced strain. Actually, strain is the ratio of change in length by original length. Let's calculate it. This rubber is on a graph sheet. Let's consider the side parallel to the x-axis as longitudinal axis and the side parallel to the y-axis as the lateral axis. The length of the rubber along the longitudinal axis is 10 cm and when I apply a force, the rubber expands and becomes 15 cm. Since the rubber expands in the longitudinal direction, it experiences a longitudinal strain. We know strain is change in length by original length. So, Change in length is 15 minus 10, that is 5 centimeters. And the original length is 10 centimeters. Dividing that, we get 0.5. If you see, the breadth of this rubber is 5 centimeters. So when we pull the rubber, it gets thinner in the y axis or the lateral axis and becomes 3.9 centimeters. Here, it experiences lateral strain. Again, strain is the change in length by original length. So the change in length is 5 minus 3.9 that is minus 1.1 centimeters. The minus sign here indicates the decrease in length. So the lateral strain is minus 1.1 divided by 5 that is minus 0.22. Now we have the longitudinal and lateral strain. Let's calculate the Poisson's ratio of this rubber. Applying the lateral strain and the longitudinal strain, we get minus of minus 0.22 divided by 0.5. So here, minus into minus becomes plus and we get plus 0.44. And that's it. 0.44 is the Poisson's ratio. For every material, the Poisson's ratio ranges between minus 1 to 0.5. And based on the value, they are categorized as positive Poisson, zero poison and negative poison. Let's talk about the positive poison. So when you take a material with positive poison and stretch it, it expands in one direction and gets thinner on the other direction. Compress it, it bulges out in the other direction. This rubber is also an example of positive poison. Similarly, bricks and steel also work the same way, keeping buildings safe. Then zero poison. Vision made from vibranium can pass through walls and objects without changing shape. Just like that, materials made of zero poisons ratio doesn't change shape when stretched or compressed. They maintain their shape perfectly. Wooden corks are an example of zero poisons ratio. Unlike rubber corks which expand when compressed, wooden corks stay the same shape when a force is applied. So they're best for sealing wine bottles without breaking them. Finally, negative poison. When materials with negative poison are stretched, instead of thinning, they expand laterally. This is the opposite of normal materials. Similarly, when they are compressed, they move inwards rather than bulging out. This behavior is seen in oxytic fibers, which have unique internal structures that makes this possible. This makes them incredible at absorbing impact. These oxytic fibers were actually used in the second helmet that we used for the experiment. And guess where else they are used? They are used in helmets for better protection and wrestling mats to reduce injuries and even in Olympic sprinting tracks. Yes, in Olympics, oxytic materials are used in running tracks to reduce the stress on athletes' joints and improve their performance. Even our own 
Achilles tendon has a negative Poisson's ratio helping it absorb stress when we run. Now let's see how oxidic materials work. When Captain America's shield takes a hit, does it absorb all the force at one point? No. The energy spreads across the entire shield, reducing the force at one point. That's what oxidic materials do. But when a force hits an oxidic foam, it compresses inward rather than thinning and expanding outwards. This spreads the impact evenly, reducing pressure at that point. So guys, the next time you get a helmet, make sure to check its quality. Let me give you some tips to get a helmet. Firstly, check if your helmet has a ISI certification mark of IS4151. This ensures that your helmet meets the safety standards. And if you're looking for international safety ratings, ECE, DOT or Snell rated helmets would be an excellent option. So the next time you get a helmet, make sure you get the right fit. Not too loose, not too tight. And guys, avoid half helmets like these because they're not gonna provide full protection for your head, okay? So make sure you get a full helmet to give you superior protection. Next, let's talk about straps. Helmets with strong adjustable straps are crucial. There are two main types of straps, the quick release buckles and the D-ring fasteners. The quick release buckles are convenient for day-to-day -day life use, but they are not safe. They might come off easily when you take a fall, so you can go for the D-ring fasteners. Finally, let's talk about the outer shell of a helmet. So the outer shell of a helmet is made of thermoplastic. Thermoplastics are safe but cannot withstand a lot of impact, so you can go for Carbon fiber based materials, these are light and safe. So these are gonna keep you safe from impacts. And yes, talking about padding materials, oxidic fibers would be great if you could afford them or else thermocool would do just fine. So the next time you ride a bike, make sure to wear a helmet and see you guys in another video.